what in the name of everything that's holy is going on with all these music genres, like math rock or Teutonic thrash metal or Italian occult psychedelia. It seems like there were fewer genres back in the day. You'd press rock and get Led Zeppelin. But now, Spotify Rap, at the end of each year, says we listen to some hundreds of genres. If you've managed to comprehensively categorize your library by genre, then bravo. That's no easy task. So what are genres, and why are they important? Let's start by looking at what they are. The word genre is rooted in two Latin words. First, genus, meaning kind or type. Second, gener, meaning to generate. So genre works in these two ways simultaneously, both categorizing and creating new knowledge about music. Think for a second, if the genres of the 70s were still the only genres we had, our vocabulary about music would be quite stunted. Genres work as a starting point, a structure for artists to extrapolate from in order to find new subgenres. John Fro, in his book Genre, says it's one of the ways in which texts seek to control the uncertainty of communication. Our baseline understanding of genre allows us to infer things about a given piece that aren't spoken. Genre is fundamental to every, every generation of meaning. Every text is generically organized because we recognize it as being this thing and not that thing. And that orients us towards the kinds of meanings that we read into it. Um, when we hear a track of country music, we know that there are going to be certain kinds of affect and certain kinds of meaning that come through in a country song that aren't going to come through in uh, an opera by John Nixon. Seems to me genres are about relativity. They are created to simplify the overwhelming tasks of organizing our tastes, developing our personal and communal identities, and sharing a cultural understanding. Classification is the simplest understanding of genre, a taxonomy, which we consider to be labeled containers that we throw stuff into based on certain criteria. It's a hierarchy that describes relationships between certain things moving from the broad to the specific. This is a basic scientific structure that we try to apply to all things around us. Domain kingdom phylum class, order family genus species. With each step, we identify a single factor that highlights our specific target's relation to others. Domain referring to cell structure, kingdom relating to flora or fauna, phylum denoting a spine, class showing reproduction, order describing diet, family is all like animals across the world, genus narrows it down to a specific geographic location, and finally species. But don't worry, we're not hunting animals here. Our target in this case is a song. This is a scientific gold standard. If music genres can fit neatly into this, then a knot would be untied. So let's try to apply it to music. Say we want to place rock music in a hierarchy. First, we should agree on what our domain will be. Say, humanity. Kingdom would then be culture. Phylum, art. Class, music. Now we get to our first genre, rock, which is the order. But now that we're here, how do we move further down? With the classical song structure? Intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, outro? Or maybe we should start with the birth of the genre. But should we then focus on where or when? And what about instrumentation? Already we have so many different angles through which we can define genre that this taxonomy doesn't seem to apply anymore. Or we'd all have to come to a common understanding of where to start. We'd end up with a list of genres that tends to be wider than it is tall. It's very useful for broad genres, which might be why hip hop and rap are often combined, or why R&B and soul are usually placed next to each other. But when it comes to arena rock versus dad rock, it's not so easy to say. So if we can't exactly agree upon one way to classify our music, perhaps we should use the machine. Maybe computers can distinguish every conceivable facet of dad rock. In 2010, there was a study published about the automated classification of music that was intended to classify music signals into a single, unique, class-based computational analysis of music feature representations. <laughs> Well, this is academic speak for isolating specific attributes of sound signals. Their goal was to take these specified signals and allow a computer to organize them into set genres. With this, we might finally get an answer to whether the Old Town Road's remix is hip hop or country. I got the horses in the back. First, they made their own hierarchies like electronic rock, which breaks down into disco, rock, and metal. They used these to test the computer against, and in one case, they found their algorithm generalized music exactly as they had. 
The other case, however, did not, and the algorithm had trouble differentiating between ambient and classical music. What this shows is that genres are semantic in a way that is distinctly human. The authors of the study even postulate that maybe the computer could find some new semantic relationship between music that would be imperceptible to us. This study shows us a less human approach to our understanding of genre. If we boil it down to a nice thick gravy, genre is most likely based on certain sound profiles, right? It makes sense, but that doesn't account for the myriad individual and ever so delicate human touches that give us both nuance and a million different subgenres of vaporwave. So we see that genre doesn't entirely fit into the scientific frame. And that must be the human, because genre is a cultural shorthand, a way to describe something complex as quickly and efficiently as possible. Conversely, then we generalize ourselves through our tastes, what kind of movies we like, the music we listen to, what kind of books we read. And these are all things about ourselves we would describe in terms of genre. It's just easier. Different communities define themselves in terms of their, their tastes, their cultural practices. Um, and that's very, I mean, music is absolutely central to that, particularly for, you know, kids between 10 and, and 25, maybe 30. Um, it's, it's the most powerful former of your identity as a person. It's, it's really how you define the groups that, that you belong to and the groups that you don't belong to, much more important than any other cultural practice. And, and, and music really is very much about that. It's about not just what you like, but about what you really hate um, and how you define yourself in terms of what you like and what you hate. Generalization is a way for us to make passing judgments of ourselves, of others, and that's why taxonomy and automatic categorization don't work flawlessly. We each define genres subtly in our own way, and just as the art itself is subjective, so too is its categorization. There are ways of thinking reasonably precisely about genre, but genre has to be understood as a social construct. I mean, we all know intuitively the difference between rock and, and pop, or the, the difference between Bruce Spring, Springsteen and Bob Dylan. We know, you know exactly what those differences are, um, but defining them, categorizing them is, is, is difficult. Fortunately for us, we're already extremely comfortable with genre in the abstract. All of this information is quite intuitive. It only twists and turns the harder you think about it. But it is important to know these functions and what they say about us and our culture. Take pop music. It's infinitely divisible. One could argue it's the most broad genre there is. But the word pop tells us that this song is part of a continuum, the popular sounds and styles of a time. Our definition of pop doesn't have to be consistent as far as instrumentation or geographical location or even a time period. Listening to a 60s pop song is a completely different experience now, but it's still pop. What did we find? Well, musical genres are a way to categorize our music to make it easier to consume. On a high level, we can try to take a scientific approach to be as broad as possible, but as they say, the devil is in the details. Further down the chain, the taxonomic system breaks down as the subgenres multiply, and automation isn't effective because computers read music in a completely different way from us. Our music genres are a complete mess because of us. On the bright side, this tangled web of weird words and various waves has created friendships, helped people find communities, and find themselves. Thanks for watching. If you want to dive deeper in our research, take a look in the description. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.